getting better. Since you've been mine. And now, 1160 AM KBDT proudly presents Life Solutions. Coaching, counseling, naturopathic medicine, insights for successful living, and getting better with Ann Beal. Welcome. We are going to share <clears throat> a personal event that happened to us over the holidays. We wanted you to learn from it. We also wanted you to know how to help others. And so we are actually going to talk about the 25 ways to help those in the hospital for the holidays. We had a loved one that was in the hospital for 30 days, and it was very hard on him. And it was hard for people who got really sick, that couldn't visit and work and all that. And he ended up passing away. And so we learned a lot uh, what to do, what not to do. And um, definitely over the holidays, if you have loved ones in the hospital or you know someone that's in the hospital, um, or even a nursing home or a rehab hospital, anything like that. They need you this holiday season. And we want you to know the way, the best way for them to feel loved, including the top five most effective ways to lend a hand to someone who is in the hospital. And so we've come up with 25 tips for you, but the five best ways as well to make them feel really loved. Uh, first, keep in mind, yes, that um, the staff also, it's always good to, to reach out to the staff there that's helping too for the holidays. So the most effective things you can do for your hospitalized friend or family member during the holidays, plus 20 quick and easy ways to bring Christmas cheer and holiday fun. I'm joined by Dr. Jim Slaughter today. Hi, everybody. Good to be with you. <laughs> we um, love Thanksgiving and Christmas. We actually went to Albuquerque to visit my dad, and it snowed. It was crazy <laughs> blizzard. But, it, you know, and they weren't real happy great. about it, but we, 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 it was only for a couple of days. We had so much fun. We did not build a snowman, though. We should have built a snowman just because we could, but we didn't think about that. Yeah. We got in some practice, maybe. We took a lot of videos. Whenever. <laughs> <laughs> we took a lot of videos and sent them back to Texas. <laughs> right. That was wonderful. Right. And that was a really good time. And, and during that time, you know, we were, we're reminded as our parents get older, for one thing, that there are people who are uh, becoming perhaps ill with different things are going on with them, uh, especially physically and um, need help. Sometimes people are kind of homebound uh, at times, you know, so it's hospitals. Yes. Uh, Oh, yeah. Rehab facilities, yes, but it's also uh, people who are who are homebound, who who can't get out for whatever reason right now, and they're at home, and and uh, they really uh, would love to have someone come and and share with them. And so we're, we're going to talk about that today. We have some older people in our neighborhood. The guy that's a World War II veteran, that's like in his ni like ninety eight. Yeah, yeah. Yep. He's by himself, and he mows his lawn and everything. It's pretty crazy, but we think about that. That's true to visit them as well. And so number one would be spend time with them, right? Well, yeah, that's the first idea that, that pops into your mind when you're thinking about this is that you go. You, you go, you take the time, make the effort, uh, drive the miles, and you go see them. But how aren't we reluctant to do that sometimes? We think, well, I'll get this tomorrow or I'll get it uh, you know, later in the week when I have more time. And then all of a sudden we realize there's no more time. And so that's the biggest thing. We go, go see them. Yeah, we went out of town for a week to visit my dad, who was also 88, um, and uh, not get to visit our friend, our loved one in the hospital. Um, and that seven days, we tried to arrange for people to be there for him. Because seven days alone in the hospital is a long time for them. Seven days by yourself would be horrible. It's tough and lonely. And then add Thanksgiving or Christmas, and that would just really make him feel maybe not loved even though they are, but people, you know, they work and they have kids and it's a drive and the weather, there's all these things that make you put it off. But just remember that if you can't get there, you can also have social, you know, reach out to on your social media to see if other people or friends can go visit anyone like your church to just arrange for other people as well. And if you're all doing it, it just ups the odds that the person will feel really loved. Right. That's a good point. <clears throat> and, and I especially like the idea of contacting churches in the area mm -hmm. who may have visitation ministries that they have going during the week. And they'd be happy to come by and 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 visit with your loved one in the hospital or a care facility of some kind. Also, remember that 
virtually every hospital has hospital chaplains who come to visit people in the rooms if they want that. So <clears throat> that's another possibility that's for ministry. Well, and it's just such a great way at Christmas to give back, mm-hmm. you know, giving um, of yourself and of your time to loved ones. I mean, we used to, and we, we have friends that still do this. We used to go around to senior citizen homes and, and sing hymns and Christmas carols, right? Mm-hmm. And there are people that go through the hospitals and sing Christmas carols. Just any way that you can give back. This is a wonderful one. But definitely, if you know someone, they need you there. And, and if you go visit, let's just say the number two one is to be cheerful. Okay. You know, instead of heavy and, you know, depressed or sad or sharing, you know, stressful things like talking about the politics, which are really stressful right now or whatever, the person, they say that there's these mirror neurons so that the brain of the person you're visiting will reflect the way you're behaving or if you're smiling, it causes good chemicals and good chemistry and it actually makes them feel better. Not just having you visit, but having you be in good spirits and a good mood and let them talk, which is... Right. And that's a big point, a uh, big, big part of it. <clears throat> um, it. When we go to visit someone in the hospital and we're trying to engage them in a way that will make them feel better and feel uplifted and, and that kind of thing. Uh, the truth is it's not our conversation at that point. It's not, it's not, we are not the ones who are to be talking. We're to be listening and we're engaging and letting them talk and we can ask questions and we can, we can have a conversation. Don't get me wrong, but you know, we really want to hear from them. We don't want to go on and on and on and on and on about what's happening in our life. We want to find out, uh, you know, what they're thinking and how they're feeling and things like that. So being a really good listener good is listener. Uh, incredibly important when it comes to, you know, visiting people in a care facility. Or something. And, and when I visited Bob, um, it was amazing. He was telling stories about when he met his wife and, you know, that when they dated and how she didn't like him at first and he, her mom got him to come over. And so all these details mm-hmm, I hadn't mm-hmm. heard, I knew their dating was only like six to eight weeks or something before they got engaged, but it was actually, that was an exaggeration. It was a little longer than that. I think it was 12 <laughs> weeks. So, but also I thought that he was um, living in Seattle, like he was based in Seattle in the Navy, but he wasn't. He, his Navy ship just needed repairs. So they stopped there. So it was just a stop. When he met her, and it took some time to fix the ship. So they were kind of just, you know, there for, but I think they were actually on the Navy ship, like living there. Mm -hmm. And so he met her and was visiting her, fell in love with her. And so hearing the whole story that I hadn't heard before, I thought, wait, I didn't know all that. I've known him so long and I hadn't heard any of that. I heard little. I just, yeah, I knew that they had a quick engagement. And so, Mm -hmm. and his, his um, mother-in-law, and then he went into more about, their life together. And it was just so enjoyable. And that, you know, the hour just passed really fast. Right. And I don't think I said much, except I really enjoyed listening to them. Sure. And let me just say that um, having people reflect back on their early life is one of the most therapeutic things I've discovered that we can do for people Mm -hmm. is let them remember and think about the really good parts of their early life. And gosh, going back to your first love with or maybe it wasn't the first one, but it was the first marriage. I think it married. was. He was he not very old. Yeah, he was young. They got married. And, and yeah. so that was, you know, that's that's those kinds of things really shoot endorphins into our bloodstream and, and get those going. It makes us feel better. It lifts our spirits and raises our mood and everything. And so even having, um, you know, people t- reflect on their, even their childhood years and growing up years, the good parts of that. Yes. And the good things they remember. That's very important of a visit that like we're talking about. And this show is a memorial to Robert Holman Beale. And um, we just want to honor him in every mm-hmm. way we can. Such a, he's just such a lovely man. And um, we have been heartbroken by his passing and surprised because that wasn't at all what we thought would happen. He broke his hip, but he was in good health. So Anyway, this can happen. And for us, we were trying to decide what's the best thing we can do. And um, people in the hospital, being a good listener is so important. Definitely being there. Even Skyping is another thing we saw people doing was Skyping family members that couldn't be there. So if you're there and there's someone who just can't get there, especially if they're sick, because you don't want to visit if you're sick. And this is the hard thing with all this stuff going around. Everybody's got the flu or they got this horrible cough. Uh, co- you know, congestion, and they don't know if it's allergies or what. They were Skyping these people so that he could talk with them even though they couldn't be there. That's one of the uh, most important things. Our technology has brought to us the 
uh, the ability, the, <clears throat> the opportunity to actually bring family members and friends into the hospital room. Yes. And uh, if I were in the hospital, I I would love it if somebody would, you know, uh, set up appointments with people where I could actually see their face and I could talk to them live. And and I think that's one of the best things that we have run across when it comes really to cool. helping people in the hospital. Yeah. Yes, or in, when you have a home visit. Yeah, or a home visit, right, yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, so those are really good things. And then I always suggest bring a gift. You know, we brought some books that he loves to read um, and, and just bringing things that show hope. They say don't bring things that really talk a lot about something that doesn't, you know, because they're in the hospital. So they need to be cheered up and things like that. Right. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something about the future or whatever. Just uh, just or, you know, good stories or you know, good food, or mm-hmm. they say a really nice pillow because the pillows are covered <laughs> in plastic and stuff like that. They're not yeah, as gifts comfy. that are gifts that are useful right now. Really know, nice when, blanket. When well, and those blankets, often those throws, they have they're real thin. Mm-hmm. So having a really nice, really you know, by touch, real soft blanket that you know it's nice. Things mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. um, are things to think about. So bringing a gift is a good idea. Yes, it is. Do you yeah. have any other things you can? Well, think I was of? just going to say, you know, when it comes to gifts, I think one of the most important considerations is who this who this person is, you yes. know, because if a guy didn't like to read and I bring me, bring him the book, then that's you know not real useful to him. I love to read, and so I would love to have a stack of books, you yeah, know. You but that, other people want other stuff and <laughs> would rather um, have some kind of electronic device, and that's great. iTunes, uh, some kind of a, an iTunes Music. gift card or something like that could be really really oh, yeah. good. Uh, music is one of the best ways to lift people's moods, and so we want to remember that. Oh, yes, and what I saw was a really long iPhone charger, phone charger, mm-hmm. with a really long, you know, a long cord, because they've got to plug it into the wall that actually reaches the table by their bed. Right, and right. It's not real close. And so getting a really f- long phone charger, and then headphones so they can listen to music on their phone if right. they want to do that, Right. Right, and th- those are such excellent uh, suggestions, you know, for people who are in that situation. And <clears throat> it really helps pass the time when they have gifts like that that they can interact with and, you know, and, and use right now. Well, and um, dry shampoo, because he couldn't get out of bed, right? So dry shampoo and a bra- like a travel brush, you can get those in a set, but definitely the dry shampoo so that they can get their hair looking nice. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have dignity. They want to look good. Right. And so sure. something like that is a really cool. I know um, their feet get cold. So socks, slippers, mm-hmm. having comfy pajamas. Yeah, there are things that you can bring that are perfectly OK with mm-hmm. the hospital personnel, you know, and and the staff and everything. It's just that we don't think about them sometimes. And so, you know, if you're uh, if you're listening to the program today, it might be really good. To take note of these things. Uh, almost everybody knows someone who uh, is you know, in, in impaired in some way so that they can't get out or they're, they're mm-hmm. in the hospital, they're sick or whatever, and uh, or they're at home and uh, don't get out much. And almost everybody knows someone like that. And so this is, this is good, current, practical stuff. Well, and if you know a family that has somebody in the hospital, you know, they're going a lot. So you could always get things for them to help them be able to, like parking passes or I don't know, they pay for parking often at the hospital or anything like that where they can, it makes it easier for them, like a basket of snacks from like Sam's or Costco or things like that where they have snacks Mm -hmm. there. It's just anything that you can think of. I think that healthy snacks are good because they're spending a lot of time at the hospital probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, in light of that, sometimes it can really help. In fact, it'd probably be good to check signals with the hospital staff. And just, you know, make sure it's okay and then before you sneak stuff in. Yeah. <laughs> no, my grandmother would say, no, don't do that. You are scheming with the nurses. You are scheming. I'll be like, can you have sugar? What? Of course I can. And then when I didn't bring it, did they tell you you couldn't bring it? It's so funny. So um, the other thing is consider if you know a family that it's in a, uh, that they're having to stay in a hotel or drive a long ways. Maybe you could give them a nice hotel stay or mm-hmm. help pay for a hotel, anything like that. So we just are going to go through the 25 things that we want you to know are so helpful people so that you can give back and be with them and give to them for Christmas. This is the best time to do that and one of the best ways to do it. Mm-hmm. So stay right here. We're going to go through all of those so that you can make them feel very loved. Okay, so um, anything I missed? 
the gifts. I didn't go through well, we can do all more the gifts. gifts. We did some. Yeah. But we can do more. These are the ones we really <clears throat> like. I wanted to talk about, well, we talked about listening. Yeah. Uh, oh, I forgot about the Uber. Patients. <laughs> Help with things back home. We haven't mentioned that yet. I did oh, yeah, yeah, that. yeah. Things that aren't being done um, at home, like his cat. I mean, sorry, his dog, <clears throat> somebody's cat, um, anything well, like there, that. There are other things just for the season, bringing in a Christmas tree yes! with LED lights and the lights making the, the door windows. a package, oh, yeah. you know, wrapping okay. the door like a package and anything that can raise a person's spirits, you know, yeah. which is really well, I think that, like in the in the hospital room, you know, all the stuff that they could have, the pens and markers and thank you card, whatever, so they can write notes or things to do in there uh -huh. for them, not just have the TV with the clicker. <clears throat> that's right. all they have to do. Well, there and one thing I didn't think about, and it wasn't on any of the list that we saw particularly, but there are word puzzles and number puzzles and books with word fine things yeah, you and love stuff those. like that. You yeah, know, they, and, yeah, <clears throat> anything like that and plants. Adult coloring um, books, all kinds. Yeah, yeah, plants, right. Plants that you can put in stuffed animals. Anything that would make them feel really loved when you're not there mm -hmm. so they could think. And also to pass the time. You know, that's where a lot of things that we were thinking about. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think okay. we got most of it. Um, encouraging notes, activities. And, uh, you know, so many hospital rooms don't have chairs. They do not have chairs. They might have one chair. So, I, I mean, know, that's, I, true. that's one of the things. Is. I was standing around a lot, so <clears throat> you would want chairs. But you could bring a chair, like folding chairs. Folding and put them, I chair. wonder. Yeah, I got to ask I about know. that because um, it's like not very inviting to stay very long. Well, maybe that's why they don't have <laughs> chairs there. I yes. don't know. They don't want people hanging around. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> honestly, uh, you know, often patients in a hospital room need that. And sometimes they I know they don't. Stay. You have to make sure that that they're, you know, far enough into the recovery process, probably where they don't need to sleep all the time or yeah. they're not taking medication regularly that keeps them asleep or something like that. So. And they say don't sit on their bed, you know, don't okay. sit on their bed. But definitely <clears throat> they need more chairs because um, that was one of the main things. Where do you sit, right? Um, but I would also say get a bed. Ask for a family member, some kind of thing where you can rest as well for how long he was there. You know, mm -hmm. you want to be able to rest there. And a lot of them bring in a bed so you can stay there. Mm -hmm. They bring in some kind of thing yeah. like that, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, okay. You did good. Good listener. Anything else you can think of? Well, they, you know, they just mentioned back. a lot of things holiday back home, things, that's Christmas right. things like stringing colored lights. Those and, are so good. That's right. And, Those uh, are so good. <clears throat> watching Christmas movies, you know, with them and and uh, Elf and the Grinch who stole Christmas and things like that. So you could help them do their hair, blow blow dry their hair, blow out their hair after you put anything mm -hmm. like that. You know that they would like. You ask them what they want or what they need. I know lotion. They're always dry in the hospital. Mm -hmm. People in the hospital always have dry skin. It's, is that because it's so cold? Okay, thank you. What do you think? To admit it's getting better. And now here's more Getting Better with Ann Beal on 1160 AM KBDT. We are helping you know 25 ways to help those in the hospital for the holiday or in senior citizens' homes or going to visit somebody in your neighborhood or something like that. Um, I think a really fun thing, Jim, would be a movie holiday bonanza, like, <laughs> yeah. or, or whatever kind of movies they like. You can have a movie time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just yep. to sit with them and enjoy whatever kind of movies they like, mm -hmm. right? Something like that. That would be fun. Well, Christmas time, there are lots of Christmas movies out there and holiday type movies, and and uh, that'd be an excellent thing to do. Most people enjoy that kind of thing, and and it would be good. Well, and so you'd have to bring your laptop or something like that. Well, some hospital iPad. rooms even have a DVD <clears throat> player, so you could bring in some DVDs. But they didn't though. They did not. Really? Hmm. No. You, no. Oh, in his room? I didn't see one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But that would have been good. Mm -hmm. um, and really, that's where getting creative about all the things that you can do to help them enjoy their time. Thinking people on an airplane. 
I mean, they are on the, their computers or on their phones or watching movies on their phone or listening to music or they have stuff to do. Some of them are doing crossword puzzles or things like that. Right. And that's just on a plane for like three hours or two hours. I mean, think of a week or, or a month. whatever, you know. Yes. Yeah. And so we were <clears> talking about <throat> some other things that you could bring in that would uh, be activity oriented, you know. And things like word find uh, puzzle books and uh, uh, number oriented mm -hmm. puzzles and games and um, things like that. Well, are, and so number one, help. definitely, we we really want to encourage you to go if you're well and be a good listener. Bring gifts. We said that you know gifts that will help them. Yeah. Um, and I know we talked about or helping the family who's coming, anything like that. Um, you wanted to talk a little bit more about, um, I can't remember what it was, but you mentioned it during the Well, let me just say, I, and I just, I don't know if this is what you had in mind, but <clears throat> I know, or I, I, I think that it, um, can be, a, a kind of a distracting and dist <clears throat> distressing thing for people to worry about what's happening back home. Yes. And so, um, to help make sure that things are in order back home, it could be taking care of pets. If that's what the need is, uh, it could be just making sure that uh, the, the house is <clears throat> straight, clean, whatever, or that the trash is not piling up someplace, and, and also that there's uh, care for children and, and just Anything being like willing it. to help in, <laughs> in any way with things back home. Yeah. Bring them, and this is one of the things, bring them bills or anything they need, because often hospital stays are unexpected. Mm -hmm. uh, only when you're pregnant are they planned usually things are usually planned some surgeries are and stuff like that but um, really anything you can think of I wanted to play cards I love playing cards you know with my dad and um, and so if they're card players you can bring cards anything yep. like that to really help them cheer them up happy any, music right games. well any kind of a table game I mean, yeah you, know, they, you could if, do even yes. dominoes or yes. something like that you yeah know, or Scrabble or something yeah, it's fun. And I think that often older people do play cards. Mm -hmm. They like table games and stuff like that. If they're younger, well, you know, if you know them, you know what they like, you can ask them what they wanted to bring. What would they like to do for fun? Right? Yeah, absolutely. You can just uh, see what they would like. Now you mentioned on the break. So if you would like to watch the show Getting Better with MBL, you can do it on Facebook. You can just go to Getting Better with MBL on Facebook. And then we often transfer them to YouTube and Instagram. <clears throat> um, if you have any ideas for us, please give us a call, 214-810-8255, or you can text us at 817-501-1638. Mm -hmm. We'd love the ideas because we'll pass them around and we'll blog it after the show, any ideas that you have or things that you've experienced with loved ones in the hospital. Um, you mentioned LED lights on their windows, so oh, Christmas lights. Uh -huh. You're stringing Christmas lights around in the room. In the and, room. And even setting up a... a a small Christmas tree in the yes. room with lights, LED lights on it. And I mean, if it's Christmas time or the holidays, I mean, people want to observe the holidays. They don't want to be, a, you know, uh, yeah. uh, absent from that. They want to participate in that too. So, and this is a, you know, Christmas in particular, that's a perfect time to do things like this. I, you know, someone mentioned, uh, wrapping the door like a package, yeah. you know, uh, they're, they're the door to their room. And so there are all kinds of different things like that, that you can do. Uh, in fact, I, <laughs> I just thought of this, but our daughter, uh, she, she she thought, you know, she saw these little Christmas, Christmas gnomes, gnomes, and she said, I, I can do that. And so just on the side, she began making these little gnomes. Yes. Uh, and they're fan they're un unbelievable. They're so yes. funny. You look at them, you just start laughing. And, and so anything like that, you know, could be a, a really wonderful addition to a person's uh, hospital room and hospital stay. Those Christmas gnomes would look so cute in a hospital room. Wouldn't They're they so great? adorable. They're just like the long beards, and I don't know if you've seen them. But um, anything like that. So, and asking them if they like LED lights, if they like white, or if they like warm color, if they like colored lights. A lot of people think colorful lights, right, uh, would be good. And um, you can do uh, gift certificates for the family, anything like that. Sure. So, food gift certificates. Let me just say... Bob didn't like the hospital food, so you could bring him food in, and that's where Uber or Lyft or some of those things, the Uber or food or Uber Eats, you could have it delivered. But picking them up a nice meal that they love and bring into them is awesome. You just ask him, what can I bring you? My grandmother, it was a root beer float. She wanted a root beer float. So I went and got a root beer float. That was right. awesome. Great Christmas present. and lobster yeah no he loves steak bombs hamburger <laughs> yeah he doesn't he's not that kind of person yeah yeah 
Um, okay, that was good. Bring in decorations, uh, gas cards if they go far. You know, I was thinking about Kathy and Eileen going to the hospital with her daughter and all that. Yeah. And the whole family ended up staying in a hotel mm-hmm. close by the mm-hmm. hospital, right. things like that, you know? Yeah. So that was cool. Um, anything else? Let me think here. Uh, don't forget gifts, gifts for families of patients. We hit that kind of. Yeah. Parking passes. Uh, we didn't talk about bringing something for nurses and techs. You, you know, I, yeah. I guess you that. could do that. Yeah. Just bake some cookies or something. Download seasonal or inspirational music. Mm-hmm. Uh, air freshener. I don't know about that. I know they're air sense, but you want it to not be toxic. Right? Yeah, and you, and you don't want it overwhelming either, mm-hmm. you know. But Homemade uh, treats? Yes. We didn't mention that. And I was thinking, that's Post good. You know, board. most people can throw some cookies. Bring in, in a gourmet oven, you know? meal. Oh, you can make <clears> food. <throat> Think about that. Make homemade. Mo- you know, a lot of people go to Sam's or different uh, stores, you know, and uh, pick things up. Yeah. This would be a good time to do that. Or, you know, just uh, bake, bake some cookies in the oven and... And take them, you know, what that's not the hard. things not to do? I don't know. Yeah, we hadn't, hadn't touched we'll on that. Treats. Have I'm not mm-hmm. sure about this one. Oh, here, maybe it's here. I had the things. Oh, here, here, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gifts for patients. Yeah, there's things not to do. Ebook reader. Kindle. Hmm. Yeah. Um, books on um, audio books. Awesome. There's the website I was talking about. It's the so the Caring Bridge website. That's what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that's what you meant. Yeah. This website had, helps we left that out. your friend if their stay or their condition expects okay. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But that is. That that is to let everyone know in the family instead of having to contact each person mm-hmm. every time. Mm-hmm. It lets everyone know in the family. But I would also use social media to let everyone know. What? They look great. They look great? Yeah. Oh, oh. God, that's almost wrong. I'm like, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Um, let's see. Cambridge website. That's right. You know, we came up. Uh, movie marathon. Okay. Okay. Good, 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 good. Okay. So the things not to do. We came to finish this and then things. We already said don't visit them if you're sick, right? Yeah, and some of these things are kind of iffy. I mean, you do want to wash your hands before coming and going. I don't know about the sanitizers, but. I also uh, wouldn't say this one where they, I'm so not for having them step out of the doctor's there. They need to stay. You need to always stay. Yeah. Uh, call or text before visiting, I guess. Um, Not, but you don't have to do you that. You don't have to do that. I don't like that one either. Um, that's, and those are people that, that's just our, a lot of people. Uh, What is the Del Walmsley Radio Show? Welcome to the Del Walmsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Walmsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Listen to the Del Walmsley Radio Show, Monday through Friday from 11 until noon. It takes a whole lot more effort to get something started in your life than it does to keep it moving. Del Walmsley has moved thousands closer to a great life. The Del Walmsley Radio Show is now on 1160 AM KBDT, Monday through Friday from 11 until noon. Listen and move toward your great life today. To admit it's getting better, it's a little better. If you'd like to get better, call Ann right now. 214-810-8255. 214-810-TALK. Now more with Ann Beal on 1160 AM KBDT. Welcome back. We are helping you know how to reach out to people in need this holiday season and give back by visiting people in the hospital or nursing homes or in your neighborhood, anything like that, or helping families who are having to do that and to just be there for them. I also want to give a shout out to one of our sponsors, Pet Me Grooming Supplies and Dog Wash. They're both in 
Hazlitt and Keller, Texas. And it is a really awesome place. You can go wash your dog yourself. Okay. And you can have them groomed and they have great, healthy, healthy, healthy dog snacks and all the supplies you need for dogs. And we just, uh, Welcome them, and we love that store. It's right by our office in Hazlitt and mm-hmm. the whole staff there at PetMe. So I know for you, you were concerned just really, we were talking about that a lot of people will say for privacy if a doctor comes in for you to step out, and we are both totally really against that. Yeah, I mean, if if, if, if they say they're going to call security if you don't leave, <laughs> then that's different, right? But I, we suggest – Staying, Staying, just yes. to make sure that you know what they're taking, if there's medication being given, just to, so you know what's happening. And so, um, yeah, I personally think that's a part of a family member's responsibility. Well, and if they ask you to leave, that's different. That's different. You know, right. not the doctor, because it's up to the patient, right? But they also want to remember, because, you know, doctor goes through stuff. They don't hear it all. They don't write it all down. They just try to remember. And often the doctors stop by when the family's not there, mm-hmm. or they stop by early in the morning. So if you happen to be there, it's actually really helpful. Mm-hmm. Really very, helpful. Very. And, you know, you also, if they start giving them medicine, you might want to ask what they're giving them. Mm-hmm. That's what we always say. Yep. You just, it's just a reminder. Hey, so what are you giving them? And then they'll say what it is. And then the person can be like, oh, I don't want that. Or I want that. Or, you know, my sister is a head nurse in the hospital and they do that every time. So there's mm-hmm. some things to do to really help out. Right. And um, so anyway, that's just one of the things we wanted to point out. Now we talked about making decorations for the room, like mm-hmm. homemade decorations, right? And bringing homemade treats. They often, or whatever they like. Yeah, it's so easy, really, that when you're at the grocery store, just picking up some cookies to bake and throwing them in the <laughs> oven, and and taking them with you, a couple of dozen cookies, and and uh, you can even uh, take some and put them in an extra basket and invite the staff to. You know, have some or whatever, but you yes. know that that's so easy to do. That is not hard, and it's not expensive. Oh, and no, if you bring the staff little gifts or food, they like your family member better. <laughs> that's always helpful. You know, Preferential bribe them. treatment. Right? Yes, yes, yes. And if you're nice to them, I think even though you can be, you know, firm or you can be, you can have good boundaries with them to protect your loved one. Mm-hmm. Just remember to be kind. Um, and so, because you want them to treat your family member very well. Right. So that's just some of the things your loved one. Um, So bringing Christmas music, you know, uh, downloading inspirational music is Mm -hmm. always really helpful. Yeah. And, you know, um, there are so many, such a wide variety of Christmas tunes and Christmas hymns and Christmas songs Mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing. And some are very lively and jazzy and and others are uh, more subdued and and uh, kind of more reverential, you know, yeah. and so there's a wide variety to pick from. And uh, so yes, you can, yes, you, yes. you have a lot to choose from. Well, and I like reading aloud mm-hmm. to, you know, I'll ask them, hey, you want me to read to you? Some people don't like that. They can't follow it. Yeah, some people right? don't, they but can't. others do. Yeah. yeah, I know you like it. I do. We do it together, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I do it when I visit. Um, and so there's just different things like that you can do. Um, we actually would like you to know that if your loved one's in the hospital, someone you care about, you really do want someone there as much as you can, like a lot. And I, my sister being a head nurse in a hospital, she, her, her friend had a stroke and they had a schedule around the clock mm-hmm. for people to be there and never left her alone. Right. Uh, first of all, it helps so much with a person's emotions and psyche to know that people care and that they're there. Now, if they need some time and they're like, oh my gosh, you're getting on my nerves, go away, please go, right? Like, that's not what we're talking about, but um, you just don't wanna leave them alone very long at all. Mm -hmm. And it's very encouraging to them to know they're loved and they can just expand on it in either a positive way or a negative way, more in the hospital if they don't see you than at home because, okay, now I'm not well, right? And people aren't coming. Mm -hmm. Or now I broke my hip and people aren't coming. Something like that. It's just, it tends to, they tend to exaggerate how people feel about them. If they don't come, it makes them feel like they're not loved. For the most part, uh, having someone with you is very comforting. And if they need rest, they'll tell you. They say, I think I need to get some sleep. And uh, that doesn't mean you have to leave. It just means that they're ready not to interact for a while and and would like to rest and close their eyes or something. Yes. So, yeah. And we also encourage getting them out of the hospital as quick as you can. I mean, if they need rehab, take them to a rehab facility. I mean, the cool thing about the way it's paid for with your insurance or Medicare or Medicaid or whatever that is, it's the exact same payment that the insurance pays. To, and it doesn't matter if it's a high-level rehab hospital or they have gyms and 
all kinds of occupational and physical therapists and all these kinds of therapists and steak and lobster and all this, the <laughs> private room I want that. and with an extra bed. I mean, there's all these cool things and that's what we put my dad in when mm -hmm. he broke his hip and there's no long-term care there. I never put him in a rehab thing that has long-term care because you want him to be, you want the staff to have no, you don't want them to have any reason to want to keep them there. You want them to want to get them out, get them healthy and have them on their way. Right. And so that's my suggestion. Um, you want to get them out of the hospital as quick as you can when they're, you know, when they break their hip, they get them up the next day. It's really painful and they start them walking. So once they're able to be mobile to go, you want to get them out of there. Mainly there's so many illnesses and viruses and bacteria and. Right. Well, the goal oh, is wellness, right? That's what we're talking wellness, about. I want to yes. get well. I don't want to just kind of maintain my disability or whatever it is. Yeah. I want to get well. And so we want to be a part of the getting well. Uh, and, you know, I was going to say, too, I mean, you know, we're talking about getting better. Getting That's better. That's the name of your show. And, and the thing is, uh, part of, you know, we, we all want to, if we're thinking clearly, we want to be better than we were last year or yesterday or whatever. Mm -hmm. We want to get better. We want to add to our skills. We want to add to our thinking. We want to deal with emotions in a better way or whatever. This is a way of getting better. I'm giving back to people, and that's very, very important. Part of my wellness, I know, is giving to other people whatever I have to give, and this is one way we can do that. And it, it really does make you feel better to know that there's something you can do to mm -hmm. really help out someone in the world, you right. know, personally. Also, it's a time when they're in the hospital when you have one-on-one -on -one deep, intimate time with them mm -hmm. to talk, right? Right. And um, a lot of people don't take that time anymore because of just so much going on all the time. Even if you stop in for family, it's, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Da, 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 fill you in and you leave. So you mm -hmm. don't really get the deep time of having them share their memories or their emotions mm -hmm. to really uh, just develop deep time. And when Bob shared some of the things that he shared yes. with you when you were there, uh, it sounds to me as you talked to me about that it was kind of a surprise to you that he took the time to go into some of those things with you. And it occurred to me that uh, when people are in the hospital or rehab or whatever, uh, they've had to go through some trauma, uh, they're more vulnerable yes. than they are at yeah. other times. And when people are vulnerable, often they will share more. Right. And um, so this is a great opportunity to hear them share things that maybe you didn't even know before, things that are important to them and they haven't ever told anybody. You are there and you have a listening ear and a caring heart and they sense that and, uh, and they'll want to share with you. Well, and I think that you grow closer to them because you listen. Mm-hmm. And you learn so much more about them. So, of course, you're more endeared to them right, and right. them to you because you did that. And I think that with the world being so busy, people really appreciate the people who visited. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be people you would not have expected to visit. Yes. And um, there are people that just really enjoy doing that. And I just really encourage you to reach out to people. And even if you, you know, you can go to the hospital and ask, hey, is there anyone here that doesn't have family that I can visit? We have a client and he volunteers mm -hmm. at a hospital. Yep. And he's, in a, you know, he, he loves it. And I think that, um, and he's improved immensely oh, he really to me, has, yeah. immensely since he started doing that. And that's where giving back helps so much when you see people light up because you're there mm -hmm. people get excited to see you it's always good to make more friends mm -hmm. and uh, and it helps slow down the world you know right and the guy that you know i think that you're talking about um the person that he visited in the hospital got well he was discharged right yeah but he came back contacted this person that we know and uh, they have become friends is that wild that's yeah, so it great is. It's yeah. Amazing. yeah yeah because it's like he really cared about me yep and, and it is a great feeling to feel that. And I know there are nurses that spend a little more time, yes. ones that really feel that, um, you know, if they have high empathy like I do, mm -hmm. you know, it, it they do that. And so it's really appreciative. But we just ask you if there's anything that you can do to give to others. And, you know, they don't have to be in the hospital. But I saw such a huge need there when we were there that um, – people need to realize how important it is just even in general but definitely during the holiday season and if you if you happen to be someone that had someone pass away like us and you have that impact of that what it feels like and the hopes you had of spending holidays with them mm -hmm. this this nice christmas season you know i wanted to spend the time with him and with the kids and so 
it's um it's more impactful to have to lose someone during Christmas and Thanksgiving. And um, if you are struggling with that, there are things by reaching out to others, even us doing this show helps us today uh -huh. because we know we're helping others do better. Right, you know, right. we're helping others see a need and reach out and make other people's lives better. And Bob would want that. I mean, he wants us to be happy and to use what we've learned from him along the way to just make this world a better place. Yeah, sure. And, you know, even as we're talking and, and we're sharing these ideas and we're coming up with things mm -hmm. that might help other people, I'm already thinking, okay, we need to make some cookies and take them over to so-and-so. And then there's also this person. Yeah, we brought here. cookies we, today to the studio. We did. We did for the yeah. whole staff. So, yeah. But anyway, it just makes us think, yeah. right, about mm -hmm. how we can reach out and touch someone in a meaningful way. And we put up the lights around the house. And so, you know, you think about how lights, I mean, there's so many lights in our neighborhood right now. I think more than ever since we've lived there. And it's so cheery the way Christmas lights make people feel, mm -hmm. right? And, and the music. And that's why most people, Christmas is like their favorite time of year. Right. And it's it's just such a wonderful time. You want to bring that into that person's space so, in any way you can. Right. Absolutely. And and this provides more opportunities than mm -hmm. most times of the year. And let me just say one thing we haven't touched on is the spiritual part right, of Christmas that. and yeah. that kind of thing. And I'm doing a whole series of shows on my program about Christmas and, and uh, especially from the scriptures and that. To, you know, there's such an opportunity for folks who are listening or, or wanting to uh, or willing to listen or wanting to hear uh, from a spiritual perspective things, even have you pray for them or with them. Uh, that's a possibility or just talk about spiritual things. And and when people are in that situation, yeah, in the hospital, they often they're want vulnerable, that. often mm -hmm. they want people to talk to them about God and about salvation and about eternity and all those things. Those are not, those are not out of bound things. Yeah. And Bob wanted that hospital. and Cheryl did that. It yeah. was amazing. It was just amazing. And I, I know that um, being willing to talk about important things and anything they need to talk about, but you want to bring it up right mm -hmm. in, a, in a good way. But I do know that you want to really lift their spirits. Yes. Um, and so you could do something goofy, like show up in a goofy Christmas sweater. <laughs> a lot of people have those. And if you haven't, you should get one. You got to go find one. And, do I and have you to, have to I just mean. hate it because it's so <laughs> stupid looking. But you wear it for just certain things like that. Right. They don't expect it. Whatever it is you're like and that you wouldn't do, get that shirt. Right. right. Get that sweat shirt or sweater because that'll make them laugh. All right. <laughs> well, and, and that's something we haven't mentioned <laughs> either uh, is the laughter uh, yeah, factor, you know, because uh, the research has shown that when we laugh, uh, endorphins are flooding our system yeah, it and it so really good. raises our spirits and, and raises the, our mood up a lot. So, you know, laughter is, one guy said laughter is the best medicine. I mean, it's, it's kind of is. Yeah. yeah. So if you know jokes, you know, they're funny. And, and one person said to me, are you dancing? I'm like, ah, ah, ah. And they start laughing. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you dance funny, anything to make them laugh is very helpful. And that's why clothes can be funny. You can dress up differently every day. When you come, you could have something on your shirt. We do have people that every time I see them, I, I laugh because of them purposely wearing things to make me laugh. And it's, um, you know, or doing something with a hat or Jim's always making me laugh. He can make a joke out of almost anything. And so I'll be like, how that is so, what's a bad joke. And it'll just make me laugh. You see, that is so dumb. <laughs> he does it all the time. And so laughing is really good and helping them laugh helping them because people are way too serious now and the news and all that junk is just way too serious. Right. And so people don't laugh as much anymore. Well, they really, they seems like they don't, you know, now unless mm -hmm. they have broken ribs, we <laughs> want to help them laugh. And that, that, that's Oh yeah. Don't really make them laugh. Thing, they have broken right? ribs. Good point. Yeah. Yes. Don't make them laugh if they have broken ribs. Um, so we just encourage you to do anything you can stay and visit with them, um, recharge their energy. Re it actually recharges your own energy. Mm -hmm. Caregiving, it can be very taxing and, and so can being a patient. And so helping even the caregivers laugh is so important and doing things for the caregiver, you know, people going back and forth or friends of yours or the main family member that really is the perfectionist that does everything right helping them out and if you don't have anyone in the hospital we just encourage you to reach out to anyone in need mm -hmm. anyone who might be lonely right sure. and do that and so when we come back we're going to give you the five most important things not to forget right after break oh <sighs> 
We've covered a lot of ground, but it's been really good, I think, you know. Yeah. I just hope people, if nothing else, maybe they'll be alerted to going to see somebody, you know, yes. or something. Yes. And uh, having the Christmas spirit, you know, there is a Christmas spirit. Would you like to end with something spiritual? We could do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we could do that. How many shows will you have before Christmas? Hmm. Two more or? I think three more. Three more. No, right? no, no. This is the uh, seventh, and Christmas is 25th, so 14th, 21st. Two mm -hmm. more shows. Two more, and then I'll have the. I might mention reading reading scripture, you know, in particular, um, Luke 2, which is the birth, birth narrative, the birth account, mm -hmm. and uh, Matthew. Um, <coughs> The wise men. What was it? Matthew 1, Matthew 2. The wise men. Yeah. Would you like me to find it for you? <laughs> I should know that. I'm surprised. <laughs> sure I'm like, really? What did I get? I know. I'm like, wait, I might be wrong. It's not Matthew 1. It's got to be Matthew 2. Well, I don't need it. I got it right here. Uh, huh. I actually wanted to about. Here we go. Look at that pretty store. Mm -hmm. That must be in Keller. And Com Saginaw and Hazlitt. Matthew 1 is just... Oh, he's open it in Keller. And Matthew 2 has got to be the... Oh, they do own that pet me there. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So, wise men... Oh, man. Did I just do that? Fine. Okay. Uh... Matthew 2, 1 through 12. You knew that. Well, I knew Matthew 2. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I had you got to think it. about the other part. <laughs> <laughs> so you could read them that stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that'd be great. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Read the, the birth narrative and Luke 2 and shepherds and wise men and all that. Mm -hmm. So those are things. So when you're there, be there. Be a good listener. Mm -hmm. Okay. And those are those five things. I just wanted to remind them about that. The five. I think it's important, important to go over those. Yeah. Yeah. Because we went through so much. Give a mini concert. My dad gave us a mini concert. Have yeah. a mini concert. <laughs> okay. Where are my five? Where are they? Where did I? I wrote them. Where are they? You got them? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. The five? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. here's, here's one. Thanks. That's not the five. No, oh, yeah. The first five. five. That's what we did. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, so people can know about that. Things not today. What would you pick? Spending oh. time listening well. Yeah. Uh, wait. I got it. Gifts. Yeah, yeah. Gifts for patients, right, gifts for right. family members. There, there you, yeah. Okay, you have it? Uh, no. <laughs> I was just, maybe I know it. <laughs> well, here, here uh, okay. Gift for, okay. Spend time. Gifts for patients, gifts for family members, helping with things back home. And then the website. I don't know about that. But. Well, we already kind of talked about that. But um, all right. Uh, we're back. To admit it's getting better. better, better, better. All the time. You're getting better all the time. Now back to Ann Beal on 1160 AM KBDT. <laughs> I am laughing because I get distracted preparing. Uh, everybody's like, put your headphones on. So anyway, just makes me laugh anyway. But Jim was ready, right ready to go. He was like go. pointing at me. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to go over the main five things to give you a reminder because to help anyone in the hospital, loved ones, friends, or if you want to help anyone, the most important thing, again, is to be there to visit and if you can't visit have somebody skype you in or video uh facetime anything like that so you can be there mm -hmm. uh being there is very important and when you're there be cheerful yes okay um and then of course we want you to make them laugh which we talked about um and then we suggest bringing a gift 
of some kind. You want to bring things for them. We went through a whole list in the last few segments of all the things. We came up with, you know, really 20 things that you could bring and do for them. And, um, but something more like what they would love. So bring them a gift. Also bring family gifts. And if you really want the staff to love your family member and spoil them, well, we say bring staff gifts. Like you're, you're laughing. Yeah, you want to yeah. make them love your family <laughs> member. Okay. So my sister's a nurse. So I just say definitely. Um, and then, of course, being able, as Dr. Slaughter said, to help people with things back home that are stressing them out, things that they worry about. We don't want them worrying. That does, that's not good. So help them with any kind of thing they need back home. Um, if they need help with pets or they want you to take out the trash or if their kids need a ride somewhere. But also you can give rides to family members if they're, you know, having trouble getting there. We had a, um, a friend, a family member, a friend that needed to get to the hospital and I couldn't, was just so upset. So we ordered a lift for them uh -huh. to get picked up and brought um, or you can have a mood bird, anything like that. So those are some really good things to do to just remember the most important things when you're there. Mm -hmm. Something else occurred to me, and that, that is that, um, and maybe somewhere along the way it got mentioned, but I was thinking that, you know, you could, you could line up some other people to right. come and yes. during, during the week on different days and, you know, and kind of cover the bases that way. And uh, that could be a good way of uh, just maintaining some, some uh, constant care, you know, in, in the room there. Yes, I just want to also, uh, coming up this afternoon at 1, live a happier, serene, more focused life with perspectives with Ashley, Ashley Burgess. She's on after us. Mm -hmm. I just want to throw in that mm -hmm. little tip. Okay. Um, on KBD Talk, Sports and News. Yes. Um, we want you to be able to really... Uh, be able to give back. It, it is good for you over the holidays. A lot of people are looking for a way. They know to donate money to some charity, you know, Toys for Tots or something like that. But when you do it personally, when it's you and you personally visit somebody, you know, and you have a gift for them in some way, or you've made them cookies, or you offer to help them out in any way, when you do that, it boosts your emotions. If you are feeling down or depressed, it's one of the best things you can do um, to just get out and give back to someone else, mm -hmm. right? Sure, absolutely. And so we just we just want to encourage that. Um, if you want to know what kinds of gifts, we have that list, but also gifts for family members. We have a list too. Um, anything that you can do to really help out. Mm -hmm. Just relieve the stress and the pressure and, and just come alongside, you know, and uh, and be there for them is, is so helpful. And pre people appreciate that. They don't forget that. Well, one of the things we were talking about on break is really sharing the Christmas story and some spiritual Christmas things sure. with them. And so you had suggestions. Well, there's some there are a lot of cards that, that you we that are available, you know, they're spiritual and their orientation. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, those cards like that with, with notes on can be very helpful. But also, I was thinking of reading the Christmas story from yes. the scriptures, from, from your Bible. Bring a Bible and a translation that is uh, something that you like and, uh, and begin re and read that to someone who might appreciate that. And you can always ask, you know, I, I, would you like to read some scripture? Would you like to read the 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 story of the coming of Christ? And most of the time they like that, yeah, right? Most, yeah. And so <clears throat> that is Matthew? Uh, the uh, the birth narrative and the announcement uh, of the angels to the shepherds is in uh, Luke 2. Luke 2. And then Matthew 2 is the coming of the Magi. The wise visit, men. The wise yes. men to visit Christ uh, as a toddler. And we don't know how many there were. No, we don't. We don't know. Well, they say three. I guess that's a good number, but they don't say how many. Could have been 20. It could have been 100. <laughs> <laughs> It could have been. Yes, Christy, it could have been. Yes, it could have been. Anyway, but yes, and, and having those discussions about the story, we had so much fun doing that. Yeah, we when you that share about the story and then you go, hey, did you know, don't know how many wise men? They're like, what? Just like Christy <laughs> did, just like Ben, right? And did you know what a manger is? Tell them what a manger is. A manger is a block of limestone hollowed out in the middle. It's just not how it's pictured. It is not. <laughs> I know. It's Christy's like, why? <laughs> <laughs> and so those are fun discussions to actually talk about what we're celebrating. Yeah. It is, it is. really, really cool. So again, I mean, I'm being goofy because making them laugh and having fun is really important. What is it? Laughter is the best medicine. It is. All right. So we just encourage you to give back this holiday season and we will keep giving you things, wonderful things to do this holiday. So stay right here getting better. See you next time. <laughs>